Hello, people of the internet, Twitch, maybe YouTube, if you're catching this live stream and it's pre-recorded, it's recorded, <laughs> whatever. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I am American McGee. Martin. And uh, back there, you can actually see Lulu. She's right th there. Look at your finger wiggle. It's tickling her. Lulu. So uh, we are coming to you live <laughs> from Shanghai, China, in the underground lair, and uh, the VPN gods willing, we're going to do some streaming today. What do we got in store, Martin? The usual. The usual. Yeah, there's going to be some Madness Returns played. We're going to look at some art. We're going to look at some Patreon questions. We're going to give away some prizes. We might look at Lulu. It's just going to have a bunch of fun today. It's going to be a fun stream. That's good, because the world <laughs> outside is, <clears throat> is sort of on fire. Yeah. Um, and we're going to try to avoid that topic. Acknowledge uh, it now, and then we'll move on. Is it now? now Why the not? Moment? Okay, we are going to acknowledge very briefly <clears throat> that the world outside is on fire, and I think everyone here agrees that the reasons for said fires are sad and unnecessary, but that, uh, as I wrote in a recent post over on my Instagram and also on my Facebook, uh, maybe these sorts of things, you know, they come along, they have a reason. Um, I've said what I was going to say about it in a recent Instagram post, and it happens to kind of align with a lot of what I, I encapsulated in a game I made a long time ago called Bad Day L.A., Many people don't know about that game. Um, it's not even really for sale anymore, so this is not like a promotional pitch or me saying go out and buy it. But one of the reasons I made Bad Day LA was to highlight a lot of the cultural, societal, and governmental issues that I saw going on in the U.S. back in the early 2000s and, and even prior to that. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I'm sad to see that the U.S. is embroiled in this kind of drama. Um, it looks like it's also spilling over a bit to the UK. Is it? It is. You know I don't watch much news. All right. But um, as I wrote here, you know, sometimes <laughs> chaos is a necessary element. Well, actually, most of the time, chaos is a necessary element for healthy change. So I do hope that the institutional problems that are prevalent in the US and around the world um, may be somewhat altered or maybe even completely changed as a result of what's going on. And for everyone that we know and love out there in the world, um, especially those of you in the midst of all that, we do hope that you are staying safe, that you're keeping your heads about you. Yeah, yeah just so. that really. So, so we're going to leave safe. it at that. We don't want to become overly political today, but at the same time it would be silly for us not to acknowledge the situation. So. We do have a lot of our insane children here in the stream with us today. Martin, who do you see? Ooh, Nabi Yang, um, Craig Spurlock, Wendy J, Jennifer's here, uh, Patient322. I saw Craig Spurlock is back. He says, the world sucks. It does. No, it doesn't. I, the I saw, world... a, saw a bunch of people telling us to remember to press record. Ah, ah, jokes on you. It is because I found that there is a record when you stream button in the settings. So I, I did that before uh, before anything else we did today is done. It is done. Now, I think many of our insane children, um, they're coming back just because they love to see our beautiful mugs and they want to see all the latest on Alice Asylum. Uh, but a few of them may be here because we did say on our social media that we will be giving away special prizes today. Ooh, would you look at that? Uh, this is the Omega necklace. Now, we actually did used to sell uh, the Omega necklace in the Mysterious Shop, but it was actually, it was a bit shonky. It wasn't, it's a Martin word, by the way. I say shonky all the time. Uh, it wasn't our own workshop building the Omega necklaces we used to sell. They were kind of, a, I guess you could say, a sort of costume jewelry they're quite cheap material. I think the plating kind of came off a bit, but they were priced appropriately. I think we sold them for like fourteen dollars <clears throat> or something like that. Something like that. Uh, so they they were just kind of cheap Halloween have fun um, Omega necklaces. We we weren't too proud of them, but um, we did decide recently to go ahead to our own workshop and have a new batch of 
mysterious branded Omega necklaces produced out of high quality metals. This is like something like uh, they said it's zinc with zinc. zinc that's been electroplated in platinum. It's like treasure or this something. Sounds really fancy to me. Anyway, um, these are not available yet. They won't go on sale until next month, which, which is July. Now, if we're all still here, you could buy them. Um, anyway, in any case, we will be giving away four of these during today's live stream. And I think we agreed that we'll do this in the next live stream as well. So, yes. Yeah. So four today, four next live stream. There you go. You can't oh. buy them. You can only win them. <clears throat> and if you do win one, do keep in mind they will not start shipping out until July. So... Are we going to down cam this actual Go one that we have? Go for it. It is right there. We do have uh, physical Ooh. samples of these have come from the Ooh. factory. And so look, they look really good. Very, very nice. Very shiny. And I, I, we are going to do uh, these certificates. Like this is a certificate from a different product you see. We, we will do a certificate of authenticity. I'll sign the certificates, but I am not going to number the certificates. <laughs> Um, first off, because these are not number limited edition <clears throat> items, and secondly, because my wrist says no, <laughs> no signing. You do sign a lot of stuff. I do sign a lot of a lot of stuff. You remember the so. out of the woods certificates? I'll be quiet. It makes my <laughs> wrist hurt just. It was to... like three thousand five hundred <laughs> of those things. Terrible. <laughs> Yeah, so um, who else have we got in the chat? Patient 323, I saw, was actually the first one in the chat today. Uh, definitely insane. Yay, YT Chaussette says Shonky. Shonky. That's Chaussette. Hello, yeah. Chaussette. Any new ones? Anyone we've not Mistress seen before? Mistress Best? Mistress Bast. Bast. Oh, I can't see that far away. Step so. on Squishy Frog something. Hmm. Anyway, uh, welcome to all of you. All right. Greetings. Let's jump right into what is it we're doing today? Alice Madness Returns. Yeah. Let's jump into Alice Madness Returns now. Where we left last left our intrepid hero, me, I guess, Alice. Uh, I think I was falling in lava. We were in the Hatter's factory. Sounds and I, sounds like you. I think I had also completed some sort of <clears throat> boss encounter on top of a clock. Is that right? Sounds like that. Uh, I Maybe. I I just remember there was a, like a big vat of molten stuff that had the hatter's arms on it. Yeah, but I got past that. Did you? Mobility yeah, yeah. Nice All right. Expect no thanks until I'm so, reconstructed. No resting on we... The old picking up a game that you left off two weeks ago, brain freeze. Like, what's, what's next? Well, I'm a little bit <laughs> concerned here because I feel like I had already picked up his legs. And now I'm going to get them again. Because remember, they were in that sort of squirrel cage. So this... I only remember arms. And they're right there. Where? They're on the stair. Oh, so we did get the arms. So then now we're off to get his legs. Alrighty, Wendy anyway. says you did not get his legs yet. Thanks, Wendy. Yeah. You know, it's a bit of a brain fart. No, so for <laughs> those of you who are following along with me on uh, Patreon, I did post up... A little bit of news about the fact that I've been suffering from these crazy migraines now and I really appreciate everybody's support and kindness and understanding because it's also kind of taken me offline in terms of work and updates but yeah my brain hasn't been working very well I've been feeling really spacey uh, I've been making a lot more mistakes than I'm I'm used to making and um, it's not good it's it's you know it's a function of little, like lack of sleep and also um, just being tired in general from feeling ill all the time so it's funny because I, I usually pride myself on having pretty good recall and memory and um, being pretty sharp uh, about things in general um, and with this going on <clears throat> that's not been the case can we blame lucky for some of this sleeplessness no not at all <laughs> uh, because he's actually pretty good he does sleep in the bed with us, bed with us sometimes and then other times we um, let him sleep in his own room and Yin's mom takes care of him overnight. Uh, I've not I've not noticed there being any real uh, relationship between him and what's going on in sleeplessness. Okay. Now it's like last night, 3 a.m. <laughs> I woke up at 3 a.m. last night. It wasn't about the kid and I had a migraine. 
pain mm. in my neck and in my head, and it sucked. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, it it looks suck. like we're supposed to get over there. Does it want me to shoot that clock? Is that what's going mm. on? I feel like that's what it wants me to do. Mm. There is a big red thing there. Does that need being shot? Seem to be working. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. You'd so think I would know my own game better than this. <laughs> uh, what have we got in chat? Mm. Did see uh, Nobra Chan was commenting on how awesome the little uh, boxes underneath the stream video on Twitch looks. The sort of like little advertising boxes that we made. Oh, yeah. They were cobbled together by Omri, and they do look pretty great. They quite, do. Uh, quite nice, those things. Yeah, they look very good. I think our Twitch page is coming together quite nicely. I guess we've basically given up on uh, YouTube because I haven't tried to go back over there to <laughs> schedule anything, but I'm assuming that it's still broken. Probably. Does this feel like... Oh, ah, that was, that was an unintentional... Mm. <laughs> sure it was. It was totally unintentional. Um, it's not clear where I'm supposed to go right now. No. This is pretty lame. Patient322 says snipe shot. I don't know if that's referring to anything. Snipe shot. Library Recluse just became a patron. Thank you very much for that. Woo! Thank you. Um, so it seems like I need to be shooting something like a sniper shot of something right but it's not not working um navi yang asks where chesh is to give you some advice who knows who knows uh yeah it doesn't seem to be working what what am i missing here i feel anyway i don't feel <laughs> embarrassed because i can't be embarrassed about the fact that i suck at my own game there just... is a pig snout can we hear it really i don't know I don't hear a pig snout, but what's that got to do with progressing right now? I don't see a pig snout. Can't hear anything. I don't hear a pig snout. Ooh. Uh, so if anyone out there should help American <laughs> McGee play American McGee's Alice. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like I want to jump out to these platforms, but I'm certain oh, that that's Oh, I bet death. you could. No, that one that you just saw, I bet you could make that. You know that's so close yeah you didn't even need like double jump for that I did I did need double jump for that that was scary double jump double jump <laughs> yes uh was that it no huh? nothing here is that where you came from <laughs> it's not where I came from but it's also not oh anything. don't tell me you're just gonna be stuck here for like today's stream wouldn't that be hilarious uh oh this seems like it's going to end poorly. Mm. Mm. Well, either the game is broken or I'm broken. <laughs> which which one is it? And why aren't our insane children helping us at all? Jump to the platform and go down the teacup coaster. Yeah, Just where's tried the teacup? That. That's, that's exactly what we is tried. Any, where, uh, is there a lever there to say, summon there the... To pig snout to the left of the doorway. Sure, but that doesn't seem to be connected to the fact that there's no... Oh, I, I yeah. see the, the pig snout, that's Mur fine. Murder it! Alright, but it's, that's not going to be what summons this this thing, is it? Because if that is, that's really stupid. Murder it better. I don't know. I, I feel like whoever designed this uh, is going to go in <laughs> Santa's naughty book for... <laughs> okay, that did not summon the... The car. I know there should be a cart here. I remember oh. that. Huh? So it just was like that bottle platform? Is that all it did? Yeah, it summoned the bottle platform. So what? <laughs> My first stream and the creator can't even find a way to continue the game. Sorry. Hey Life's tough. This is <laughs> this is your you. first stream, you know, get used to this. This is yeah. this is just how we roll. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is a little unusual though. I mean, so all right, look, if if I was playing this game and it wasn't my own game, and it is my own game, um, there's something going wrong here. There's not enough signposting, there's not enough hand holding, and my expectation here uh, would be several things. First of all, the fact that I, I don't I didn't feel comfortable jumping to this platform. And I'm not given 
uh, sort of clear direction on jumping to it and whether or not, you know, so that, yeah. that's a really good example of a jump, the one that we just did, that is a real leap of faith. <clears throat> and I'm not sure I'm a big fan of the, the leap of faith. Now, I was able to go to the other one. Clearly, I, I went to the other one <laughs> last time. And so now I've gone to this one and it's working. Um, maybe it's my own fault. Now, I did get my MRI results back, and I'd like to say that they said I had brain cancer, and that would uh, excuse me from my poor understanding of the, the environment there, but um, they did not say I have brain cancer. In fact, they said my brain is perfectly normal, so <laughs> I, I have no excuse. It's not missing the gameplay parts I, of I, the brain. I have no excuse for being so terrible. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Stupid MRI. These words there. Mm. Now, I thought my MRI was going to come back and at least say that I had like one of those <laughs> brain worms that you're always reading about, you know, like the guy eats raw meat and then he ends <laughs> up having like a one foot long worm in his Ugh. brain. Oh, well, it happens, right? Does and, it? Sure. Uh, so, yeah, I thought um, that I was going to gonna have a serious problem but it didn't happen uh, yay they came, they came back and said no worm and <laughs> no problem great stuff and not now really. just find out what is the problem well i was gonna say this is this is the problem is that i would have liked there to be a resolution to the situation did i just <laughs> excellent bye <laughs> i didn't even mean to do that um, yeah, I would have liked there to be a result. I mean, I don't think I wanted it to be brain cancer, uh, but I would have liked to have some sort of resolution to um, the problem because it, the, the situation right now is, is a bit nightmarish. It's not fun. Yeah. Um, and I, and I want to know what's wrong. Let's hope. Let's hope uh, somebody can find something and you stop getting debilitating brain pain. It was weird, too, because when I was in um, Thailand for three months, I didn't have the problem at all. The headaches just completely went away. And uh, I've told Yen, I was, was hoping the doctor would just say, like, yep, well, you've just got to go live on a sailboat. But he didn't say that, so <laughs> sad. Maybe they'll say it next time. Well, my bribe clearly wasn't big enough. <laughs> um, just saw a question, but then... Uh... That got answered. SpongeBob24 asks, in all caps, Are you ever going to put classic blonde Alice into the game? To which also got replied, No, because, you know, being sued is not fun. Yeah. So, never happening. Ever. Uh, that's a strange, uh, strange request. I can say I've never seen anybody request that before. Um, <laughs> I wonder why somebody would. I, I guess I have a question for you. Why would you want that? I don't know. Just people like DLC and alternate costumes, I guess. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I suppose from that perspective... Um, yeah, but it, it suddenly raises a lot of, you know, metaphysical questions about the nature of Alice's reality and why do we have this black-haired version that's running around and who's the blonde hair version in relation to her and... I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, also, I don't want to get sued. <laughs> you know, this, this is our Alice's story. Our Alice is the little goth girl who carries the knives around. Uh, I don't think that um, I would, it totally makes sense to be inserting other characters like that in here. Maybe Alice is just a designation like 007. Could be. <laughs> it certainly could be. Um... I want to say I'm not a big fan of these squishy puzzles. I, I'm not. What do you think about the squishy puzzles, Martin? Um, fine with them, I guess. Yeah. Just a bit of timing. It's all. It's all good. Uh, yeah. It's all. It's all good. Until you get squished, <laughs> then it's not good anymore. Get squish. Squish your Alice. Squishing your head. <laughs> Maybe you need to be big Alice for this, so you can go faster. I think you're right. I think my mistake was staying small. Now, go, am go. I supposed to go um, in here? I guess so. Yeah. It's 
where I would have gone. You would think that by the number of times I've, you know, after the number of times I've played this game, I would uh, have a better memory about where to go, what to do, but you would think wrong! <laughs> so after the game was completed and you didn't have to play it for sort of like just testing and sort of fun work type purposes, how many times would you say you've completed this? Outside of the uh, the work stuff. Outside of work stuff. Well, I mean, I I think we've talked about this before. Uh, I don't remember ever playing it for... Not right. I feel like there was one time where I played it for pleasure uh, on a console um, after it had been finished. I can't remember why, but I, I remember I played it at home for pleasure. It may have been because I'd hooked up a new projector or something like that. Right. Uh, and then the next time after that was... Uh-oh. What happened? Uh, the next time after that was for a live stream. Whenever, so, whenever you and I started live streaming. So me. this could very well be attempt number three. I think so. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, don't have, like, crazy high <laughs> expectations of my ability to play my own game. Um, that would be That would be silly of you. Oh, this Squish. it's just nerve-wracking, you know? Just terrible. I I'm I hate it. I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to get ah, Why? Why what? Why, why did you not stop? And... Why didn't you stop? Why didn't you stop me, Martin? <laughs> what? Ah. <laughs> oh. I like the going on I like here. to see the butterflies. That's ah. Oh. <laughs> I think it's really Good. cool when she when she smushed into Butterflies. Does that mean that, that this whole game is actually just a bunch of butterflies occupying a suit of clothes, <laughs> pretending to be Alice? I think that's the, that's the true story of this, of this game. Could be like million ants, but it's, with that's, butterflies. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> million butterflies. Exactly what I actually I'm watched that again, like a few days ago. That's a really good one. Oh, what's, uh, <clears throat> what's going on in chat? Uh, Guitar Bard loves squishy puzzles. Well, there you go. Just you that hates them. Look, I don't hate them. It's the it's it's a sense of dread that comes with them, and I, you know the sense of dread is good. I'm not I'm not uh, poo pooing it. Um, that kind of thing can be uh, useful, helpful, interesting for the increasing increasing of drama in a game. You know, so. Mm -hmm. uh, Perfectly fine. When I say I hate it, it's uh, me being dramatic. Not right. true hate. Okay. Dramatical hate. Um, Prin Prinosoma uh, says one thing I'd want in Asylum is the possibility to speed run it. Speed run anything. You, you can. Don't, you speed don't have run to like anything. build it into the game. No. <laughs> and I've seen people doing speed runs of of uh, Madness Returns. It's pretty. I mean, it sounds obvious. But isn't like the record for Madness Returns sort of, like really fast, you know, like, like ten minutes or something stupid um, like that? Or am I just imagining things? I don't think it's ten minutes, but I thought I thought it. I don't know. Someone's gonna have to look that up. I don't want to. I don't want to bullshit my way into that. I don't want to bullshit my way through that question because I don't right. actually remember uh, what the what the number was. But, uh, yeah, speedrunning. I quite like watching like speedrunning videos. The uh, Apollo Legend YouTube channel has a lot of good stuff. Right. And it's just insane what people do. I mean, we're at the stage now where people are literally about like five milliseconds away from achieving a perfect tool-assisted Mario, <laughs> like that, Super Mario run. Look at that teapot back there. He's really angry that these... Uh... These guys are blocking his. Uh, hey, you, you hit my my rabbit there. Okay. Hey. Uh, I timed that not right. Way to go, Alice. Poor umbrella <laughs> skills. What? It's, uh... What's going on there? Why isn't it? Oh, it's not him that you can do that with. Sorry. That's why. Uh, but yeah, speed running. It's uh, we did actually get uh, some message the other day. The message is a couple of times now, asking uh, if they can help with asylum testing because they're part of like a speedrun community. Yeah, we get a we're lot. Not, of... We're not quite there yet. <laughs> we get a lot of strange requests. I mean, the the most common one is from people who want to do um, VO. Get a lot of those. That happens a lot. Um, I don't know 
know why that is. It's because there's just that many sort of amateur VO people out there that that are constantly looking for work. Um, I wonder if amateur VO people realize how many amateur VO people there are <laughs> in the world. Um, if they understand sort of what it is that they're uh, they're sort of competing against. Because there's Maybe. a lot. Maybe they do. That's why they reach out. They've got to do as much stuff as possible to get the work. Um, yeah, I mean, well, but I, I think that if you were in that space, you not sure what you would do. Uh, I wouldn't want to be in that space, I guess is one way to put it, because there does seem to be a tremendous amount of competition. And I think there's a lot of people who kind of feel like, hey, I can just do amateur VO from my closet or my basement. Right. Um, and in some instances that's true, so it, it makes it a very <clears throat> sort of common thing that people are trying to do. But anyway, there's a lot more amateur VR, VO people out there than are necessary for the, <laughs> the demand in the market. Some good ones though. I have a listen to uh, the, uh, the links they send sometimes and some good stuff out there, but... He said there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff out there. Well, and, and, you know, we still get the questions quite often about, like, are we going to bring back the original cast? And right now the answer is yes. Now, of course, if we continue on at this pace and we're not getting any, any, anywhere with EA on a license agreement, um, the original cast and myself may all be dead uh, by the time <laughs> EA gets their shit together. But assuming that EA does get something done, hopefully maybe even by the end of this year, then yeah, we'd bring back Susie Braun, and we'd bring back Roger Jackson, and we'd bring back um, uh, any number of other people who've had previous involvement. You know, Chris Verna has expressed strong interest in being involved, so all of those people um, and more can come back and uh, work on the game. Yep. So, but of course, the sad thing is for people who are sort of up and coming in the industry, that doesn't necessarily leave a lot of space for them. You know, as as new newcomers to the space to come on board and say, "Hey, I want to be the voice of Alice." It's like, uh, sorry, we've already got that, right? Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Apparently, it scrolled past. A couple of people researched for us. The speed running record is one hour forty six minutes. Yeah. It makes it's sense bad. because it's a it's a heavily gated game. You know you. There's a lot of... Ah, oh boy. Jeez, ah, jeez, Rick. But you know there's lots of different speedruns, isn't there? There's like ones where you're not allowed to glitch, and there's ones where you can literally do anything you want. You can push through geometry, you can fall through levels. Yeah, sure. Uh, I just yeah. don't think that this game is well sort of structured to any of that. Because it's it's gated. There's there's these giant like we're seeing right now these giant environmental puzzles. Um, you just kind of have to get through some of this stuff. Yeah. I'm sure there's I'm sure there's places in the game where there there are elements that you can uh, you can fake your way past it. Uh, but I think there's probably as many places in the game where you cannot. And yeah. So I, I imagine this is not a speedrunner's paradise. You know. <laughs> Yeah. And by the way, uh, I would be terrible at that. <laughs> I would. I think so. You know, it'd be funny is if we had a speedrunner side by side with me. Because <laughs> you just how said, many times can they finish the, the game, game before, before you do once? That, that would be amazing. <laughs> would be pretty funny. <laughs> uh, somebody mentioned apparently you've got a lot of teeth. Yeah, in the game, I so you know. should be upgrading. This is they were bugging me about this last time as well, and I was thinking that before I started today, that I should be upgrading my teeth, and I haven't been doing it. Um, where you, you go to weapons, and then you go to here, and you upgrade, upgrade. All right, there we go. We've upgraded the pepper grinder. Can we do it again? You can just. Let's do it. Look at that. Now we've got the Ooh, look at it. evil red looks satanic one. now. It does look satanic, like a satanic <clears> pig. <throat> well, anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people out there who are going to be a lot better at this game, and games in general than me. I don't really pride myself on being an exceptionally good gamer, but um, I, I kind of view that as a, as a virtue, because when it comes to my philosophy on game design, I generally want to make games more accessible. 
which is why I think my games are, are known for like their art and story, not so much for their gameplay. Uh, the thing I've found though is that that's difficult for me is that I, you know, I'm working with a team on a game like this, even though I will make it clear from the start that I'm not a fan of pixel perfect jumps, I'm not a fan of sort of hiding the ball from the player in terms of death and where they're supposed to go next. Um, there are oftentimes disagreements about that philosophy, about that approach to how to, de how to design the game. And so I'll find that my team is sort of thwarting my, uh, my expectations uh, in the way that they design the puzzles and the levels and stuff like that, which, you know, I'll admit has led to confrontation and, um, yeah, just sort of general uncomfortableness in the past. Okay. Um, but anyway. Somebody says there's a target up. It probably is. Uh, Maybe. But you know... Ooh, there. You know what somebody else says? Okay. Yeah, it's over yeah. there. Uh, you know what somebody else says? You know what time it is? Hammer time. It is hammer time. So you're going to have to come up with the first question. Uh -oh. Because you're so terrible at them. Uh-oh. Something about speed running, perhaps. I can't think of anything. What's your favorite weapon in Madness Returns? Oh, God. <laughs> That's horrible. Come on. It is. Come on. Um, what kind of other DLC costume for Alice would you like to see that wouldn't get us completely sued? What? No, just why don't you ask something? Doing a call back to why something. You, why don't you make some, <laughs> ask something simple like, what do you think is the solution to the racial disparity problems in the United States? I mean, something that, simple. Just, yeah, like that. would be perfectly simple. Right. <laughs> all right. Uh, so it is contest time, <clears throat> and we do need to come up with a question to ask all of you. Just ask two questions. I just, they weren't, they didn't do it for me. So um, today we are giving away two Omega necklaces. Now these are not actually available for sale right now. They're gonna, as I said at the start of the stream, um, they are gonna go on sale at the start of next month, which is July. Um, so the Omega necklace is something that we did used to sell, but we sold a shonky version. We're now gonna make our own very high quality beautiful mysterious version and so you can see that on the screen there I posted up on my Instagram um, it is actually over in the mysterious shop you just can't buy it yet um, but there is a button you can do email when available if you want to get okay. an email when it goes on sale so the ones that people win are they gonna have to wait for July to get shipped out as well or do we have enough sort of prototypey samples in hand I'm not sure if you're asking that just to be like um, illustrative of the point we already made or you forgot that we already made that point but yes they are gonna have to wait because the ones we have in <clears> hand are just samples um, so if you do win one of these today you will have to wait until the launch date which is July 2020 but anyway the question uh, we're gonna ask here is oh I've got a good one especially for our insane children um, what do you think if we started having these be the thing that goes out when you when you become a patron um, instead of the chaos necklace. And I'm, I ask you the same thing. Can you imagine a way in <clears> which <throat> this somehow swaps out for, or could you make it so going forward when you subscribe to Patreon at that level, you can choose between a large or small chaos necklace or this? Do that? Yeah. Easily done. Uh... Yeah, just need to edit the uh, Survey Monkey page. I was actually even thinking of moving away from Survey Monkey and mm. seeing if uh, the pleasant folks over at Backerkit would allow us to set up another project just for uh, necklace choosing. Yeah, that's was, a good idea. I was pondering that. Yeah, because I think the Survey Monkey <clears throat> thing is a bit problematic. It works, but yeah, you just have to keep remembering to look at it and check it and I, see who's replied. You know, it's it's what bothers me is I wish all this functionality was built into Patreon. I mean, for the amount of money <laughs> that they charge us as creators in overhead and for the amount of effort you see them putting into the programming of n things that we did not request and that we do not need and that are not functional for the way that we use the platform, it would be fantastic for us as creators, and I think there's a lot of functionality that could be added for the actual patrons to enable stuff like this, you know? So what's the uh, what's the feedback so far? Well, 
but kind of mixed. They all seem to like uh, the Omega one, but you know, having the choice of Omega or Chaos is the ideal solution. Yes, I think the choice option would be awesome, says Hottest Sauce. Ooh, hot, hottest sauce. Oh, I like hot sauce, so. Are you um, still having any? Because you tried to avoid it, didn't you, recently? So give me Omega, says Lusty Taco. Uh, what happens if you put hottest sauce on Lusty Taco? Oh, wow. You don't want to know. Um, Dr. Playgrat says choices are good. And uh, the Octo Chicken says, oh, yeah, Patreon sent a nice email saying they were going to start charging tax on top of the donations. Great thing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Greg, it's crazy how much Patreon does to shoot themselves in the foot. I also noticed an email they sent out recently telling everybody that, hey, you can be, you can now be charged in your local currency. And I remember when I went to meet with all the Patreon people in Los Angeles, that was like super high on their list of things that they were really excited they were going to be doing next. And I brought up a bunch of other more functional things um, and they just poo pooed all that and they were like no 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 we we believe people want to be charged tax and they also want to be uh charged in their local currency and i was like all right you know whatever guys they're a bunch of silly sausages sometimes they really are all right we're gonna roll it here uh nightbot is gonna determine a winner and three two one it is the Ooh. octo chicken hey look octo, at that octo greg seems nightbot's listening to me there you go greg so um, Greg, you know the drill. You've won things before. You need to send an email to support at mysterious.design. Include your name and your address and your phone number and do all that in a human readable Separate format. Separate lines. And do that in the next 24 hours or else. Um, and we will send you one of these lovely new <clears throat> mysterious brand Omega necklaces. Wow. Imagine that. Now, Martin, I'm challenging you now to come up with the next question. You have 30 minutes. <laughs> You've got 30 minutes to come up with Ooh. something something usable. Mm. It's tough. It is. Life is tough. I'll think about it. <laughs> He's got a funny, uh, if it's not Scottish, it's shite accent going on there. Is he? Oh yeah, I have a listen. I'm pretty. Uh, you you put those on exactly at the wrong time. <laughs> you um, might say something else. I believe that this voiceover was done by Paul Kurowski, who was uh, one of the guys in our office who was working on Madness Returns. Now Paul had come to us from Rockstar in um, a glad. How do you, how do you say it? Uh, in Scotland, there's a place called. Glastonbury? No, uh, Edinburgh. That's where they are. <laughs> so he'd come to us from Edinburgh, um, and uh, you don't like the way I say that. Americans always try to they like say Edinburgh a bit weird. Yeah, because you guys laugh at us when we say it wrong. So then we, <laughs> we overstate it so that you can't uh, you can get bent. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> How do you say Edinburgh? Edinburgh. 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 Yes. Yeah. Or like seen Americans they always like pronounce Shire really pronounced like it's in like Lord of the Rings or something like so like Gloucestershire they would pronounce it as Gloucestershire no, but see, you see <laughs> this is exactly the point I'm making I don't call it Gloucestershire because I know that it's Gloucestershire mm. I know that this is exactly the point see you just made my point for me thank you very <laughs> much Wicked British man, no wonder we separated our colonies from you guys and your oppressive language policing, stupid English. Now it's <laughs> now it's not even English anymore, it's just American. <clears throat> we, all, we all just speak American now. You might. We might. <laughs> so, um, Paul Kurowski came to Spicy Horse from Rockstar in Edinburgh. And, um, yeah, he was on board with us for this project and some others. Um, and he was a good guy, and he was one of the ones who helped out with production. You know, I think I think he's labeled as an executive producer uh, on the game, but he was he was sort of taking up a role as creative director, writer, um, producer, and he did some voiceover. So I believe that when you're hearing the March Hare spout off his madness there, uh, you're hearing Paul, the voice of Paul. Okay. Was there a 
Was all that done like in the office or you have to go to like a special recording studio? Oh no, we just uh, did it in our basement and we got a bunch of these people off the internet that had written <laughs> to us and been like, hey, I want to do voiceover for you guys. So we went, we actually found one of those guys and we went to his, his bathroom <laughs> and did it. Um, you know what I mean? In the other office, there was like the sound room next to Kian, but I didn't see the other office you were at. Martin, you were in the office we were in when we made Madness Returns. Oh, I thought you might have been at the other... I forget the name of the street where it was at. Yilu? Yanan Lu. Maybe. Pan Yu, the one All that right. was at Yanan and, and Pan Yu Lu? Sounds about, about right. Uh, no. The, the Spicy Horse office at Wang Fu Lu, the one that you know... Mm -hmm. um, that is the one where we made Madness Returns in those the what was called the Flour Mill um, buildings on, uh, building. on Suzhou Creek. It was beautiful, beautiful space. Now, by the time you arrived, had we shut down the other two buildings? I think we'd start. I think we'd no. shut down one of them. No, it, it was all open. All I, three I was in buildings. the Three buildings were Two open. buildings. Yeah, so you you were there, because during the time we were making Madness Returns, we had 85 employees spread across three buildings and two floors. Um, and the sound recording space that you and <clears throat> you know, where Kian was sitting listening to all that Allah Akbar terrorist <laughs> stuff, um, that was still the same. Right. Um, but at that time, Jason Tai was sat in that office and he was doing the, uh, the sound recording stuff for uh, Madness Returns. So, okay, yeah, the location remained the same at least for the sound recording studio, because we had to have that building or that that room, that office had to be special built. It had soundproof walls, and it had all of the wiring and hookups for um, for recording sound. So, yeah. Yep. Mm. All right. Now I know. Yeah, I mean, sound recording on a professional level um, definitely requires, you know, proper setup. And, um, you know, you can't just, you can't, well, I, I say you can't because it, the funny thing is when we worked on Grimm, uh, we were in an office in Shanghai on a street called Pan Yu Lu um, in Yan'an. Uh, that's the, the, the big expressway, the Gaojia that comes through the city. So when we did um, sound recording in that, that office and the one that we were in on Wuyi Lu, um, we actually did do the recording in a bathroom, <laughs> um, and we put a blanket. Uh, we put a blanket over the shower area to um, muffle the sound, uh -huh. um, and it worked out quite well actually. So if you if you played <laughs> Grim and you heard the toilets flushing, well, the, the, the shower <laughs> running would be more to the point. Um, but yeah, so then you. You were playing. Um, you were hearing sounds that were recorded in that bathroom area. <laughs> so hey, man, we were a, a scrappy independent developer, you know. You, yeah. Uh, you gotta, like, you gotta do what you gotta do. Rogue, rogue indie development. Do what you gotta do. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's like 15 minutes left. I'm not any closer to thinking of a question. Uh, I can't help you, Martin. Sorry. Mm. I'm gonna rub my chin a little bit. Well, it, if it helps. It might help. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Let's go. I'm not, I'm not talking to you, by the way. I'm talking to the uh, monsters here. Okay. What do we got going on in chat? I don't know. I'm getting, I'm getting fairly well stomped here, though. I was, I was trying to be strategic. Um. What am I playing recently that's got me being so bad at the uh, the lock on? Because I we talked about this last time. The lock on is a um, a lock on lock off system, and I but I the problem is I keep holding it down, um, which does not is not conducive to success. Are you uh -oh. playing stuff? Huh? Are you playing stuff now? What do you mean? Am I playing stuff? What does that even mean? <laughs> Am so I playing you're stuff? playing stuff recently that's confusing you about this control method. Oh, have you I gone back? Have you, have you turned your no, PlayStation be, on? Be quiet, Martin. Stop trying to <laughs> gamer shame me because I don't have time to play games. All right? You go. I was and just have a curious no, if you'd, no, uh, if you'd fired you up Fallen Order no, I again. I see how you gamers are. This is Gamergate all over again. <laughs> 
just given trouble to us normies for having lives and children and come on man i know where you're at yeah it's true <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even uh, playing anything recently. I'm just no? I'm waiting for Last of Us Part Two and Ghosts of Tsushima. Hmm. Those are the next biggies for no, me. Um, look, you know, if I find if there was an experience out there that I could play that I knew would give me the pleasure that like Days Gone did, uh, or what was the other thing I played recently I really enjoyed? Not stupid delivery man peeing on. Crystal peeing on guy. ghosts. No, not that. <laughs> um, there was something else I played recently I really enjoyed. Did you play? Days Gone, and then after that I played something all the way through, I thought. I, Red I, Dead? Oh yeah, Red Dead was really fun. It's true. Yeah, uh, I was trying to think. You, you, didn't, you didn't click with Horizon Zero Dawn, did you? Nope, I, that's right. I went from Horizon Zero Dawn to Red Dead. And I really enjoyed Red Dead Redemption. Mm. Alright. <clears throat> Um, so I don't know, like, if did I ever tell the story on the stream about what I did to Paul Kurowski that was terrible when I was supposed to go pick him up from the airport? Have you heard that story before? No. Oh, it was terrible. Um, <laughs> so he'd come out to, to Shanghai, and it was actually a big deal. I mean, to hire somebody who'd worked at Rockstar, um, had been there for quite a while, and we were, you know, hiring him into this scrappy little studio in Shanghai, and he was making a really big, like, change in life. You know, his wife was moving with him, he was coming over... Uh, by the way, I'm stuck, so get if in you're the in cage. the chap, get in the, you get in the cage. Um, so he, he came over for an interview. Thanks, Martin. And, you know, so we, Sakura. Oh. we, um, love of dragons. We got him to agree to come work for us, which I felt like was a bit of a coup, you know? He didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, where am I supposed to stop? There. And <laughs> so he agrees to come and work with us. And, you know, we negotiated a salary and we set a date for him to come out. And on the day of um, him supposing to, like, get off a plane and arrive in Shanghai, I knew you were going to do um, I forgot to pick him up at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he ends up coming, like, I was having a big dinner party even, which was even worse. <laughs> so he ends up showing up at my door, and I don't even know how he remembered how to get back to my house, because he'd never been there except one time. And you know how Shanghai this, is. This part of the story does sound familiar, yeah, but yeah, yeah. So keep anyway, going. <laughs> well, I mean, that was it. You know, he, he shows up, backpack and duffel bag, and he looks all frazzled and he was like you forgot to pick me up I'm like holy oh my god and I felt really terrible and good yeah you know, <laughs> never in my life have I done something so awful like that and um, I did and I'm really I, and I'm telling this like I'm embarrassed I'm, I'm genuinely truly ashamed and embarrassed if you're um, watching He's ashamed and embarrassed for what yeah. he did. I don't think Paul likes me very much anymore. I, I managed I managed to embarrass myself in front of him a few more times <laughs> to the point where I if I were Paul, I I think he'd think, no, nope, American's an a-hole. Uh, I don't want to deal with him anymore. Apology not accepted. No, so. no. I don't know how. I, I got off on the wrong foot with him, and I just never really seemed to get my footing back uh, with him. I wonder how. Yeah, well... <laughs> There you go. So, oh dear. Yep. Anyway, if I ever tell you that I'm going to pick you up from the airport, <laughs> make make a plan B just in case. Well, that or um, you know, send me a couple of reminder messages prior to the. Oh uh, yeah, because I know how you love me reminding you of stuff. Yeah, yeah, be quiet. <laughs> I've never forgotten to pick you up from the airport. Never pick me up from the airport. Well, there you go. Actually, I don't like being picked up from the airport, generally speaking, because I quite like, <laughs> you like the to maglev. You left there. No, I like using the maglev. So no. why would somebody just come and pick me up from the maglev? Mm. So, uh, yeah, I really love that thing. I wish it went further, though. No, me I too. I wish it came all the way downtown and then continued. Yeah, yeah. It's like awesome. Chingpu. <laughs> well, they are working on a new high-speed rail that's connect where we are where we are now in Chingpu to Hongqiao Railway Station to Pudong Airport. So you will have a high-speed rail solution that takes 
30 minutes to go from where we are right now to the airport in Pudong, which currently it takes an hour plus of driving or over two hours on a subway or like an hour and a half if you use subway plus the maglev. But would it stop halfway? Would I be able to get on this downtown? Are you just supposed to, to run alongside it and you just, yeah. Maybe. No, there, is, there is some sort of halfway point. Yeah. Right. That'd be fun. Catching the train to work instead of getting a taxi. There you go. But you still have two years before that's open. And by then we might have moved to some other new location, so... Eh. Alright. This dress that she's wearing right now, the, the Hatter dress, um, is very reminiscent of the outfit Yen is wearing in the new marketing photo for the uh, Omega necklace. And it's good, she's actually got the black leather and the Omega necklace on in these scenes. Ooh. There you go. You too could look just like this. If you buy an Omega necklace. Exactly. And a cosplay outfit. Hmm. Um, apparently, you sound like Jesse Eisenberg. I don't know who that is. Um, I can see his face in my mind. Not constantly, just now I'm thinking about him. Does he stream? An actor. Was he in the Zombieland? Is that Jesse Eisenberg? I don't know. I did watch the most recent. Yeah, Lusty Taco says Zombieland. Yeah, he's the kind of like the nerdy younger guy. Yeah. All right. So. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I'd rather. I feel like I would rather sound like um... Scott Pilgrim. Jesse Eisenberg isn't in Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. I know. <laughs> uh, you know, of all of the actors to sound like in that in that movie. I'd much rather sound like uh, Woody Harrelson. I mean, come on. Jesse Eisenberg. Is that, yeah. is that me? I don't know. I don't know. Sound American. I am an American. So there you go. This Maybe that's true. it. Woody Harrelson is also an American, by the way. <laughs> but, you know, he was in... Uh, yes, he played... Uh, Eisenberg played Zuckerberg. Social Network. Correct. It's the same guy. It's yeah. the same guy in Zombieland. So I sound like a robot. That's what you're trying to say. That's what somebody whose name has scrolled past was saying. Mm, okay. You know, that could be your next question. Who does American sound like? But they're all just going to say Jesse Eisenberg now. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, a good question. I did actually have one formulating in my mind, but that one might be better. So I like that in Madness Returns, the Hatter is assisting Alice. Uh, because in... Asylum, which is what we're doing pre-production on now, uh, we also have plans for the two of them to partner up. And I, I think he's a good sort of partner um, slash role model for her because she's scientific and curious and he is as well. There's times where I like to think that he's a good balanced sort of male counterpart um, to her. I won't go so far, so far as to say um, sort of father figure, uh, but I think in the context of in the context of Wonderland, having him as a sort of, uh, you know, kind of the, the wacky scientist uncle um, kind of works. I think so. I, I was distracted. Yeah. We've upset SpongeBob. Why is that? <laughs> Every time I come on your streams, you and Martin always answer my questions so rude. Do you always get on the wrong foot with your fans? What's wrong? Was that who? Who did we? Who were we rude to, and how? SpongeBob. In what way? I don't know. Let's tell him to get bent. You told him Just to get joking. bent. Just... No. I didn't hear Maybe you. Maybe if SpongeBob anybody... is new round here, I don't know. We always, we always give a good ribbing. Did we? Wait, maybe go, one of go his... back and tell me what was SpongeBob's question. Maybe it was the Jesse Eisenberg thing. I can't scroll, so I don't know. Sorry, SpongeBob. We just. That's no, just I mean, like I, I'd like to know what it is that we did uh, to upset someone. It's certainly never our goal. I don't even think that uh, we do that. Um, well, I, I mean that's a good question. So ask our insane children. Do do we make a point to insult our our viewers when we're streaming? A little gentle ribbing. I thought that we're that not was being the... like super polite. But we we've had this come up in the past where we <laughs> where we've said, yeah, we we may have a little gentle ribbing, but we we consider that a part of the sort of um, 
the sort of friendship uh, that's established when you're streaming and when you've got your uh, your fans on. I, I don't want to be saccharine and fake. Um, <laughs> So when I'm streaming and I'm talking to people in the chat, I'm talking to you as if you were here with me and Martin. Actually, I tone it back because when, when we're not streaming, <laughs> Martin, <laughs> Martin and I are definitely more, um, how would you say, rude? Risque. Risque to one another. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, what I guess one of the questions I'd have in, in response to that is, what, what do you want? Um, what do you want from no, us? No, no, no. I don't. I don't mean it like that. I mean, like, <laughs> what do you expect when you come on to chat and hang with your um, your friends, with your game creators? I mean, what what would you like? What's what's missing? Is I guess the question, and it's an honest question. <laughs> Do you want us to be sort of like the customer is always right and subservient and apologetic, or do you want us to be loose and fun and how we are? And this, I mean, this is how we are. We we rib each other a bit. Um, we're a bit non PC. You know, at the same time, we we actually do go out of our way not to misginger people. Uh, we understand that there's all kinds of different people in the world. Um, you know, I, I feel like aside from the ribbing we get it, give each other about being American or British, you know, we don't, I don't attack people based on things they can't control about themselves, where they've come from or the color of their skin or anything like that. Uh, so anyway, I, I don't want to sound defensive about this. I'm genuinely curious to know um, what is the expectation when you watch streamers, when you're in, <clears throat> you're in my home, okay? When, when you're in my <laughs> home uh, and we're playing a game, what, what's the expectation? Are we, are we being mean? No. Uh, do we need to tone it down? No, let's tone it up. Well, well, I mean, we are now. What is it? Ten fifty-seven. We're almost at prize time giveaway. So yeah, sound off in the chat. You know, for the streamers and Twitchers that you watch, do you like them to be a bit in your face and risque and? you know, raw, or do you prefer like a more saccharine type presenter, TV presenter style? I mean, there's people in the chat right now, guitar beards, are saying, turn it way up. And uh, now Martin is using that question, laughing my ass off. Um, so yeah, that's the next question. Uh, people want you to be genuine, says Lusty Taco. I think we mentioned this before. It's hard for me to be terribly serious when we're interacting with people who call themselves things like <laughs> Lusty Taco. I mean, I I figure that if I'm in a chat with Lusty Taco, I need to be down to earth with a sprinkling of spicy cheese on top, <laughs> right? Our, so. our Ed Nocturne says raw and ribbed. Sounds raw like a and condom. Ribbed. Um, but I, I am curious, I am curious, genuinely curious, to hear from the original person who brought up this topic what it was that we did or if we, did we offend? I, I mean, I we know. tell everyone to get bent at the end of every stream. Well, remember... That's part of our signing off. <laughs> remember we got in trouble once, someone sent a message and was angry because we were telling people to spam it up in the chat? Oh, yeah. And then they were angry that... We were promoting spam or like, something. You, you're saying everyone's comments are just spam. Oh, That's right. really disrespectful, That's you know. Right. <laughs> but you know. Is that what he said, Martin? He <laughs> went, <laughs> <laughs> So. <laughs> I don't think that's what that guy said. But he, you know, he talked to him. I think it was you that replied to him, and he understood, and he backed down once we said, you know, we just. We want people to like perk up Nightbot so they have a chance of winning something. That was exactly right. We we're we not calling their comments spam. literal spam. No. Uh, so yeah, it's it's kind of strange. Um, but anyway, we do. <laughs> I am interested in knowing how we can improve our our streams and how we can improve our our presentation. And look, I, I you know I, I don't feel like we can. I can't do anything other than be genuine. I don't know how to act. I'm a terrible actor. Um, I don't know how to make my voice sound deeper, um, though I'm embarrassed of that. I'll, I'll listen to our playbacks and I'm like, God damn it, why does Martin have this deep, resonant baritone? And like one day I found he was messing around with the it audio me. mix. It was you. It was you. <laughs> he was over there making me sound even more tinny. Uh, so, I, you know, there's things about my presentation I wish I could improve, um, but I, I certainly 
would like to think that uh first of all i love i love you guys and girls and shims and shizzes and whatever you want to be um i love everybody out there and i'm incredibly appreciative like you cannot believe of the opportunity we're given through the support of our fans and the last thing i would ever want to do is jeopardize that or insult anybody i mean really uh most of every day that we spend talking about customer service or um it, it, correct me if i'm wrong but a lot of times i will say to you j just do the nice thing right mm -hmm. you know it's it's never like oh damn them you know <laughs> they're stupid pitchforks and uh dump hot oil on their heads no <laughs> but that would be kind of fun dumping hot oil Maybe. Maybe. Okay, so uh, what are we doing? We're going to give away another prize. Uh, this is an Omega necklace. Uh, it's not actually on sale yet, and uh, Nightbot is going to select the winner. Quite a few of you mm -hmm. now eligible. Um, so let's go ahead and roll us some Nightbot, and then the lucky winner will get an Omega necklace mailed to them. Uh, July 2020 is when these actually launch, so you won't get yours mailed out until around that date. And then how long is it taking for stuff to get around the world these days? One million years. Wow. Good thing um, it's made out of metal. <laughs> it depends. You know, I have seen stuff take a month to get out of China. Wow. But then I saw someone else, literally, from ordering to arriving on their doorstep, it took two weeks. Huh. Some people are massively lucky, some people are unlucky. That's crazy. But generally, if people are writing into us, asking where their stuff is, I say expect four to six weeks after it's left China. Right. So, yeah, it's not great for shipping at the moment, but hopefully everything will come and nothing will get lost in a giant warehouse. Eh, we'll so. see. Yeah, I mean, the world is kind of messed up right now around shipping. Um but uh, we will send these out. So anyway, the short answer to the question is it's going to be a month before these start shipping, and then it'll probably be a month after that before you receive it. So, so it might, might make a good Christmas present <laughs> for someone. That's a long ways <laughs> off. Hopefully not that far off. But uh, yeah, anyway. All right, let's uh, ask Nightbot to go ahead and pick us a winner. And three, two, one. Living well, living hell. Woo! Okay. There you go. Um, the... That person says, I'll buy it with the money I definitely have. Well, never mind, living well, living hell. You can't have it for free. For free. <laughs> I wouldn't want to discourage you from buying it. No, no, they said they're going to buy it. So let's roll for someone else. Yes. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> All right. So living well, living hell, you have won the Omega necklace. Uh, it seems you've noticed that because you've written, oh, my God, in the chat. Uh, do the thing. The thing is to email mysterious. Oh, wait. Support at support mysterious at mysterious dot design. You take it away, Martin. I'm not going to talk over you. <laughs> uh, yeah, that name, address, phone number, separate lines. Really good. That would be great. Tell us what you won as well. I mean, we'll probably know, but it doesn't hurt. <laughs> A Ferrari. And do that. <laughs> do that in the next 24 hours, or we'll send Lulu around to bite your face. Um. Yeah, that. Do that, please. That's rude, Martin. How dare you threaten mm. people? I'm going to report you to the Twitter trust. You tr said my face was going to get bit. Bit by a dog. By, by that doll that we're looking at. Yeah, I'm going to bite your face <laughs> with this thing. All right. Uh, so we're going to do a little transition here now. We're going to start looking at some art because we are one hour into the stream. So <laughs> you know what this is, Martin? Is it a ventriloquist dummy? No. Um, it was a piece of art, or I should say it's a photo of a of a mechanical puppet doll thing, maybe a ventriloquist dummy. Um, but Alex Crowley and I were looking at yesterday, um, trying to find inspiration for the design of the moon. So we're working on a section in Alice Asylum at the beginning, which is dubbed Asylum, and it takes place within a circus. Um, and when we find Alice there, she's gonna be imprisoned, but her prison doesn't really look like a prison. So this is something Omri came up with um, that is basically her circus dreamland quarters where she's a prisoner, but she's it's sort of like an open air prison. So she, she's kind of semi aware that she's a prisoner, but not really. And there's this moon, <laughs> this creepy moon, <laughs> just staring that's, in, <laughs> that's flying around. Um, and so we've been working on the moon. 
I like this. Omri says, I see him as a jazz singer. Wow. I like that. Was there such like. thing as jazz in Victorian era? Nope. Um, Maybe. What? When did when did jazz start? <laughs> so that's a really good question. So, eighteen ninety five. No, a little bit late. Okay. Because our story is taking place in like eighteen sixty five. So we'd be yeah. about thirty years too <clears throat> soon. Sorry, um, Omri. So sorry, Omri. That's not going to work. Uh, but anyway, we have been working on the design of the moon. And um, what I had said was in some of the previous incarnations, I thought he was becoming too anthropomorphic. He was becoming too lifelike. He was becoming too realistic because the reality is that this moon is supposed to be a big mechanical contraption that's flying around up in the sky. So I quite like this, yeah. um, this version of it. I had said, you know, let's go ahead and try to drop the eyes back in the head to make it obvious that they're not, you know, it's not real. And also more or less mechanize the face and the features of the mouth and not have this wide range of, of expressions available that they had done with some of the other concept drawings. So if you look at these, you can see they've got this thing just animating all over the place. <laughs> and there was something about that plus <laughs> I, I just really this this interpretation of the moon with these big round cheeks and the whole it just wasn't, wasn't working for me. It's kind of weird. Yeah. It's uh yeah, it's just it's hard to put your finger on it. It's just I mean, odd. <laughs> I can understand. So, so one of the things we have to be really careful about is that this moon is going to be shown in context of her being imprisoned in the circus realm. And so the moon needs to fit in stylistically with the circus realm because it's a, it's a part of the circus realm. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's, there's something to be said for it being a little colorful and being a little whimsical <laughs> and... Um, that way it doesn't look out of place in the sky over circus realm. Uh, but, you know, I think this, I feel like this has gone a bit far. Now, Alex and I both agreed we really liked the skull, kind of skull presentation um, of it. And uh, so I, I think that's kind of where things went mm -hmm. in, in recent days is that, yeah, we pulled up some pictures of these wooden <laughs> mannequins and, and puppets I mean, so we were trying to push this mechanical moon design more in the direction of something that that could have come out of Hatter's factory, because that's important, that's where it's come from, um, and that kind of blends the magic of Wonderland with some of the mechanical constraints of real machines, right? Yeah. I, I'm still a fan of that crescent moon, and it's kind the, of like... This one... Yeah, well, the sort of the top left one. one. Can you imagine that singing like a really smooth lullaby, like almost like a like Frank Sinatra esque crooning with that face? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I quite like that. But yeah, so <laughs> I I also like this moon the most so far. Everything we've seen. Uh, there's a bunch of reasons why. First of all, I like the fact that it's segmented. Um, that means that it looks like it's been built. It's been built out of of separate parts, which is which is pretty typical when you're building large, you know, ships and things like that. You'll find that they are built out of big plates and segments. Um, I also feel like the stylization of the face wasn't cranked up too much. This, for me, fits quite well into the realm of the circus. Um, I can imagine there being an interior of this that we run around inside of. So. I, I had said several times that this one was my favorite one. Um, I don't know why that was ignored. Um, nobody ever listens to me. <laughs> yeah, I just noticed the tiny one below that. That's, that's this a one. creepy face. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that is actually pretty cool. So, look, you know, there, there's still some room and there's still some time for us to kind of muck around on this. Um, you know, if, any, if anyone ever wonders why... You know, things take time to make, by the way. Uh, you know, why it takes time to make video games, why this pre-production process takes as much time as it does. This is why. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not like we're telling our artists, right, muck around for as long as you possibly can and, um, you know, don't come up with the right design <laughs> right away. Which sometimes they do. 
sometimes Omri would produce these dress designs for Alice, for instance, which he somehow managed to like nail it every single time on the dress designs. I think there was only one or two out of, you know, 15 or so that were sort of rejected outright and only a few that needed, you know, any sort of meaningful revisions. Um, this moon thing has been tough and uh, you know, there's, there's still work to be done here, but um, I, think, I think we'll get there. I think so. Uh, what have we got going on there in the chat? Any good reactions? People do seem to be liking the crescent moon more, it uh -huh. seems. Uh, yeah. There's some screaming going on there. Yeah. Is that the guy that you say we angered? Yeah. SpongeBob. He says, <laughs> America. Are you talking to me or the country? If you're talking to the country, I think that's a different live stream. I don't know when America live streams, but it's it's not here. Um, when I make my oh, was I just offensive? Was that joking? Like ribbing? Was that was that offensive? Is Whatever that what you do, you you have to read it like a normal person, even though it's in all caps. America. Oh. When I make my own business, I would like to meet you, and I will remind you about my comment. And Martin, if you read this, please. Why did he write don't in, is he like a reverse caps type of person? Oh, no. Please don't read it in an angry voice. Read it like a normal person. <laughs> oh, SpongeBob, we love you so much. Thank you for bringing some... Um, some, some joy to our lives. Our joy to our life. Uh, great. Yeah, SpongeBob, <laughs> when you do start your own business, let us know and remind us, and that would be great. And we will try in the future to read your comments in a normal, a normal voice. Sorry about that. Maybe. All right. <laughs> um, anything else you got going on here in the Ooh. comments? Somebody says pick that one, but I don't know which one that was. <laughs> uh, boy. Crescent with open gears showing. Definitely okay. like the Crescent Moon more. Yeah. Crescent Moon seems to be more plausible for the circus. The full moon is a bit weird. Makes it look seem like it's trying to be the sun. Yeah. So, uh, there's another set of kind of decisions that are being made here in the circus realm. One of them is, is with regards to Alice's quarters. I mean, you could kind of say that it's her jail cell because she is a prisoner within denial. And, um... Yeah, so this is what that looks like. It's kind of a mix between a, a tent and a circus caravan. Yeah. Um, now, I noticed that Omri continues to bring up this non-Euclidean geometry, and um, I want to say, Omri, can we please pull back on that for now? There will be places where that makes sense and where we're going to want to do that, um, but I want to keep that reserved for very specific instances, very specific domains, um, specifically the Hatter's Domain, when we get there, because it's had this sort of quantum chaos bomb go off, and so up is down, and down is up, and dog is cat, and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> um, I don't want us to start messing around with that before we get there, because it won't really make sense. The, the whole point of trying to use something like that is that it comes out of Alice's encounter with the upside down nature of Hatter's blown up realm. Um, but we're not there yet, so let's let's please leave that alone for now. Dial it back. Dial it back. Tad. Um, so yeah, this is her quarters. And then you can also see over in the corner here is the little mock turtle, and he's got his little sad. Yeah, they've uh, uh, Amaranth Bunny spotted the mock turtle, says it's so adorable. Well, he is going to be one of the first characters, well, he is the first character you interact with when you get into that realm. Um, so he, he does have his own little corner there. He does live with Alice. He's basically Alice's sail, cellmate. What's that noise? No. It's you. It's not me. Stop making noises. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he's her cellmate, <laughs> and he's going to provide a bit of exposition, and he's going to give her a little bit of um, someone to bounce a what's this, where am I, what's going on off of, right? Yeah. Could be the slippers that you're hearing. Stop it. Stop it. Is that please. it? Please. Stop it, Martin. <laughs> Don't make me murder you on a, on a live Twitch well, stream. Stop making the slippers sticky. Stop it. Take them off. <laughs> I'm not joking. I'll stop this stream. 
so the other thing that's getting done here is that props are being built for this area. Uh, these props are the things that you would find, for instance, in her <coughs> quarters. I like that. Interesting kind of hmm. alchemy. Is it a rug? It's like a rug. I think it's a rug. Yes. And there is a turtle in a globe. That's pretty cool. You know why? Because there's eventually going to be something that, that pays that off. Oh. Mm, wait till you see the concept art for that. Maybe we did see that last time. Oh, shut up. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, this is, uh, this is Mock Turtle's little corner over there. Cool stuff. It now, is. Omri um, and I think Omri and Alex are kind of having a back and forth about the fact that her, her little living quarters here didn't feel prison enough um, like to them. And I, I made the point that, look, you know, we, we don't actually want her to look like she's in a prison or a jail. Um, one of the goals is for it to feel like it's an open air. It's, it's prison, mm -hmm. yeah, she can't escape it, but it's supposed to be beautiful and wacky and fun. It's supposed to be a circus. And I don't want her behind bars. Um, and I brought up with Alex, I don't know if I mentioned Omri, do you know this old TV show called The Prisoner? I know it. Yeah, so The Prisoner was like a 1967 British um, sort of TV <clears throat> drama. And the main character was trapped in this weird, on this weird island um, from which he was not allowed to escape, but he could roam around the grounds and the island freely. Yeah, so yeah. Um, there weren't bars on the windows. He wasn't handcuffed. Um, but there was a giant ball. There was a giant ball <laughs> that chased him around. <laughs> if he tried and, escaping. <laughs> and messed him over <laughs> every time he tried to get away. I remember one episode where he did almost get away, I think. Because he like enlisted the help of some other prisoners, yep. but at the end of the episode, the other guy double crossed him, because he thought that he was working for the bad guys. Right. And he's like, well, somebody like this who was like so trying to get out, it must surely have been fake. Right. You were just testing me. That's why I snitched on you. Oh, boy. So he almost got away if it wasn't for the other guy being too suspicious. I would have got away with it if it weren't <laughs> for you, damn kids. Anyway, so this ball chased this guy around, and he could never escape. But um, the main point that I was trying to make was that I envision Alice's prison in denial as being a sort of similar, it's a similar state. Um, she, yeah, she's in prison, and yeah, she can't escape from this particular island, and, and eventually you will learn that it is an island. Um, I guess we did show that last week, the, uh, yeah. the whole concept of denial on the back of the turtle floating through space. Is that right? Um, the one I'm thinking of, it was in water. Well, I mean, the one, yeah, it'll, it'll eventually be in water. I mean, I'm sorry, it'll eventually be in space with the piece of concept art that we had found. And by the way, I want to stress again, this is not from our artists. I don't know who this is from. Apologies to whoever created this for my not crediting you. It's not written on the, the image that we found, and it wasn't on the page where we found the image either. So we're not credit thieves. We're not trying to claim that this is our art. This was only used as reference for the concept of... <laughs> a prison upon the back of a turtle and now what we're going to do is something like this but floating through space um now omri made fun of me because he said that like michael moorcock or i can't remember some author called and wanted their idea back because or neil gaiman <laughs> I, I can't remember who it was but i mean you know it's a concept the the turtles upon turtles and you know infinite uh, progression is the nature of the universe or elephants upon elephants or a turtle floating through space with a with a world on its back whatever it's been done i understand and so look it's not the most original idea in the world now now omri was like it ought to be on the back of a crow that's what omri sounds like by the way um <laughs> i don't think i've ever spoken to him i talked verbally. to him he doesn't sound like that at all does he not 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 in the least bit he sounds like your jewish mother that you don't have because you're not <laughs> Jewish. Um, but anyway, so Omri said, no, this ought to all be on the back of a crow. And then we got into this whole thing about how many fictional universes could an unladen crow carry in the back of its... Anyway, did it, would it carry it like between the, you know, pectoral and dorsal, blah, 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 right? Anyway, okay. Badly made Monty Python joke. 
So this this is kind of where we're going with where denial rests <clears throat> in Wonderland. And that's why there is a turtle in a globe. Well, that is a very cute little reference to the concept of the, the globe there that you see that has a turtle in it. Um, so, haha, foreshadowing. <laughs> For Take sure. Take that. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. So that's, that's the work that the team, uh, some of the work that they did this week on the moon. Any Excellent. questions? No, that, that's pretty thorough. Any questions in chat? I think so. Um, saw some people talking about the animated show Reboot. Yeah. They did an episode that was a bit like The Prisoner, apparently. I used yeah. to watch Reboot. Loved it. Cool. It looks a bit shonky now, though. Right, right. It's like all CG from like 20 years ago. <laughs> so uh, there's other stuff the team's working on this week. I mean, <clears throat> this is, for me, this is exciting stuff to see come alive. And there was a little bit of production back and forth on this. These are obviously the animation sort of frames for Alice's various actions. So we have Norman working on these now. He's doing these in a purposefully quick sketch style. And it was Alex who came to me this week and he asked whether or not he thought it would make sense for us to render out in finer detail these images. And my sense was, and I'd be curious to kind of hear, like, what do you, what do you think? What are the viewers think but my sense was I prefer them to stay like this and we don't render them out or you know we don't go in and try to find a selection of them to render out the reason being is that I think that when you have things that are meant to be animated but they're presented in a lower fidelity 2d it gives mm -hmm. your brain an opportunity to fill in the gaps and so you end up imagining a lot more detail a lot more expression in these than if we were to go and render them out because by the time you've done that the artist has sort of taken the imagination out of it for you does that make sense sure i mean even then when i was just looking at it yes your eyeballs are just seeing sketches but you can imagine it in like full color yep. flowing dress yep. jumping around yeah so i i think that Certainly for, for myself, when, when all the detail is not filled in, it means that I can spend a lot more time imagining where I might fill the detail in. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll get there. I mean, eventually, obviously, you'll see this stuff in game. But uh, anyway, I, I really like the work he's doing here. Um, I like the content and the emotion of it. I think he's capturing it all very well. Um, so excited to see... You know, at the end of this, we're going to have a giant section of the Design Bible, which just contains uh, page after page of all of the emotions and actions uh, that the Alice player character can take. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. For those, pretty cool, don't they? For those that are, are just joining us, never watched us before, um, all of this work is now being funneled into <clears throat> a Design Bible. And so that's going to end up being a a large volume you know multi hundred page book uh that contains the entire game from beginning to end oh that looks bad it's not showing dropped frames yet though somebody just said lag black screen uh oh something might want to just turn that vpn off on again oh the, the vpn completely logged out we're not using that oh we're using not that. using that uh well, it says there that we're still connected, so. Well, that's just the, the router has logged us out. So Remember, we're still streaming and recording here for YouTube. So people on YouTube, uh, <laughs> you're watching this, you're not seeing any problems. Ooh. But for people who were watching us on Twitch, we've just gone blank. <clears throat> so oh, maybe no. I'm going to click disconnect. Give it a go. You're connected to Supercharged 5? Hmm. I've never used that one before. Do you mind if I go back to 3? I always found that that, that okay. did me well. Do it. Anyway. So, yeah. Uh, YouTube people, you guys are getting a recorded, pre-recorded <laughs> stream. Uh, as all of you know, we are coming to the world live from China. In China, we have to use a VPN to get access to things like YouTube and Facebook and Twitter because those things are blocked here in China. So 
when we're streaming, oftentimes we're running into VPN problems, um, and that's what's just happened. Uh, so we're hoping that we've just reset the... Well, yes, glass wire is showing yellow. Is yellow up or down? I don't yellow know. is down. We need pink. Uh, so it says, welcome to the chat room. So I believe we are back now. Um, no. Yeah. No. No. No, but the chat's working. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. Well, yeah, this, we need that to be pink, This not still yellow. says reconnecting here. <clears throat> Stream is disconnected, attempting, attempting to reconnect a minute ago. Uh, no video, everyone's saying mm -hmm. echo, echo, echo. Craig, <laughs> I don't know what that means, but... Can we to try a different in server? Try a different five again. Okay. We know that worked, it just fell over. Well, sometimes when they fall over, they don't get back up again. Anyway, sorry uh, everyone, <laughs> YouTube, sorry people on Twitch. This is just one of the realities of streaming from behind the Great Firewall. Okay, that reconnected really damn fast. And it's... let's just see if we can't get... Okay, it's so quiet now. Not <laughs> actually letting me put any chat. What he's saying, just be patient. Yes, please. <laughs> Do you want to kill that and try software? Kill the router, you mean? Yeah. Uh, could do. Maybe we're just done for today, at least on Twitch. Why am I here? What is my purpose? <laughs> well, um, okay, disconnect that. And we're going to go over to software VP. <laughs> this must be uh, super exciting for everyone on YouTube. All right, software VPN is up. Then uh, now trying software VPN. Not letting me chat to Twitch, so click reconnecting. Does that do anything? I click that if it's gonna disconnect. No. Huh? No. Message just disappeared. Okay. Now on software VPN. Nothing I can do about this reconnecting message is the problem. Unless I hit that button, but yeah, uh, I don't want to do that. Well, it went 90 minutes before it died, more or less. That's all right, I guess. I Maybe mean, we could continue. This is just uploading to okay. YouTube later. Well, we're going to continue. Um, I do think we're at the point right now. <laughs> well, first of all, we're supposed to give away another prize. I don't know how to do that when um, we don't have any viewers. Uh, there's no one for Nightbot to give prizes to. Kind of bad. Uh, people are saying refresh. It's weird. The chat is still clearly working, but we ain't streaming. <laughs> Do you want me to click? Yeah, your stream is experiencing issues. Your stream oh. quality is good. Oh, now we're back. Okay. No. Yes. Minor issues. I think we should be back now. It says we're experiencing oh. issues, but... It's we coming. Go. Yeah. It's... Going up. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, we're getting 3,000. Dropping some frames, but we're back. Okay. Um, we are back, and actually we're back just in time to give away another something something. Yes. You want to try? We're going to try. The, stream, um, the bit rate we're getting right now is very terrible, though. Yeah, it's not brilliant, yep. is it? We, it's you, not. we switched over to software VPN now from hardware. And it's sad. And it is. It's a sad panda. We are dropping 75%. Should of we frames. quickly shout out for freaky fandoms? <laughs> yeah, while well, everything's broken. Well, it's going to be fine on YouTube. Okay. Look, <laughs> we, we can't do much to fix this. We are still recording. We will post this up to YouTube. So let's just get back to the show. Let's go power through it. Um, everybody on Twitch, we're really sorry. We only have so much control over this. So um, here we go. So it is time um, both to give away another prize, which let's just give that a shot. Um, I guess one of the things we could do as a question is how much do you hate the Great Firewall? 
That would be a really good question to ask. Quite a lot. And uh, what we are giving away today is another of these Omega necklaces. Um, as it says here, they won't be ready until July 2020, but uh, we will send you one at that point. So let us know how much you hate the Great Firewall. And in the meantime, we are going to do a shout out for our friends over at Freaky Fandoms. Now, Freaky Fandoms um, <coughs> are Andrew and Deborah, who are longtime and maybe our biggest fans. I hope not in the misery sort of way. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they have a podcast where they cover art and games and culture and music and books and all kinds of fun stuff. And this week it is Flash Gordon. Did you listen to this one? I have. I heard that uh, Deborah had never actually seen Flash Gordon before, and I thought that was a bit of a shock. I, what the hell is that all about? But I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it was from an era that there were a lot of shonky, as you would say, <laughs> things going around. You know, Highlander was in that same era. Krull. Krull. Did, did you watch Krull? Of course. Of course. Um, so anyway, there, there, were, there were a lot of things going around those days. I think you could have let something like Flash Gordon somehow magically slip under the carpet. But <laughs> as she said, a lot of people in her family are huge fans of Queen, as, as we are as well. Um, and of course, they did the music for Flash Gordon. So it's almost like if you knew Queen, you would know that there was a song or two by Queen from this movie. And you'd think, hey, I'd go and watch this movie. But yeah. Yeah, and you know, she liked it. Mm -hmm. So that was great. They, they were talking about all the production, all the different actors that are in it and everything. They gave it a really good breakdown. Yeah. So uh, yes, everyone, go listen to Freaky Fandoms and their various podcasts about various movies, games, and other cult-type media. Yeah, yeah. They are, they are excellent at it. Go give them some love. There you go. So um, let's go ahead and roll it and see who Nightbot selects to be the winner. Hopefully Nightbot's still got its brain intact. And it is Alex Susher. Alexi Susher. Oh, Alex E. Susher. Alexi Alex Susher. is Usher. Alex is Usher. Really? Why don't you just call yourself Usher then? Anyway, <laughs> um, Usher or Alex is Usher or Alexi Susher. Anyway. You have won the prize. Congratulations. Uh, do the thing. you got to send an email to support at mysterious.design. Include your name. I don't care if it's Alexi, Alex, or Usher. Um, but your name, your mailing address, your phone number, all in a human-readable format. And do that within the next 24 hours. And we oh, will... that'll be trouble. Why do you always got to interrupt me? I should interrupt you more often. You should. Rude. <laughs> Very rude. Um, I do want to take a quick moment as an aside. And I... Ah, and I, oh boy. It's not because I want to defend China or the Great Firewall, because I'm not a fan of the Great Firewall, but I did notice that a moment ago, <laughs> Greg wrote that the reason for the existence of the firewall is to control or restrict the flow of information to prevent people from learning on their own. Um, it is, to my mind, a horrible crime against the human condition. We need to be free to learn and communicate. So I have a counterpoint to this, and I've actually mentioned it previously. I would recommend that you go to read a book called Surveillance Capitalism. Um, it's by a woman named Susanna Zoboff, I think is her name. Um, anyway, in that book, she makes a case for how companies like Facebook, Google, Twitter, Instagram, I don't know some of those are the same, but are, are essentially using the internet as a form of mind control <clears throat> over populations and so there's this data mining that goes on but there's also a feedback loop of pressing of pushing information back out into the internet and curating what it is we're able to know and read and, and understand um, and that the effect of that upon societies is actually quite powerful and can be quite damaging and it's also something that we are not willingly participating in in fact it's all hidden behind um, NDAs and behind terms and conditions and behind the little ubiquitous, um, you know, agreement to um, the, the the terms of service that everyone clicks on. One of the reasons, one of, not the entire reason, but one of the reasons why China has thrown up a great firewall is that they also do those th same things to their own people that Facebook, for instance, does to Americans or that Google does to Americans and the rest of the world, and they don't want the competition. 
right? They don't want Google and Facebook coming in and having that sort of manipulative mind control power over the citizens that live here in China. And you could argue that, well, hey, if Google was doing the mind control, maybe at least they would highlight some of the inequities that maybe exist within Chinese culture. Um, the problem is that you can see, as we do these days in the U.S., um, they're not even very good at highlighting and giving a fair and balanced presentation about inequities or problems that was, exist within the domains where they operate. Um, and they're also not elected. They're not given that power from us, um, you know, willfully or openly. Uh, it's all kind of shady, underhanded stuff. So one of the, just, just to continue this, because I often get very frustrated at the firewall and I often shake my fist and I'm like, why? <laughs> Um, just to make the point, I, I wish the firewall weren't there, but there are some reasons of sort of protecting their national identity, their national security, their national brain space, where it almost kind of makes sense that they don't want to let that stuff in. Um, so maybe if the world became a more open place about what those platforms mm -hmm. are doing, countries like China would be more willing to open up um, their internet. But right now, no, they, they don't really see that there's much benefit in that. So mm. so it's go. not just as simple as China bad. It, no, nothing's ever that simple, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, nothing's ever really that simple. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean, just on a daily basis, having to use a VPN, which sometimes falls over and doesn't work, can be troublesome for nice. us. It's really annoying. Even um, just not on a work basis, you know, sometimes yeah. I just want to watch YouTube without buffering in yeah. 720p. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, so he says, Dr. Chicken says, oh, not to say those guys are blameless. There are many parts of the internet and communications that could and need to be more free. Neither states nor organizations should be doing this garbage. Unfortunately, they are. China's flaws do not excuse the Western flaws, nor does the organization in the West excuse what... A absolutely, Greg. You, you and I are on the exact same point. I think... Um, the original hope um, and concept behind the internet was a place where we, the people um, across all nations, would become more free mm -hmm. and we'd have more access to information. That obviously hasn't happened. There's been a kind of siloing and there's been a taking over of the internet as a, as a corporate space or government space, and it's it's wrong on all sides. Um, I do hope, and I'm sure that you also <laughs> hope, that something uh, could happen to uh, break that up and make it better, but you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't hold my breath. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you're interested in that topic, if you're interested in why I have these kinds of thoughts, um, definitely go and read two books I think are really interesting. One is free. It's a PDF that was put out by Julian Assange of WikiLeaks. It's called When Google Met WikiLeaks. And the other one is the Susanna Zoboff, I think it's Zoboff book called Surveillance Capitalism. I think both of them will open your eyes in an all new way to kind of like why the internet and the world is the way it is. Wow. Phew. Ooh, do oh you need boy. a break? No. Uh, <laughs> let's get to some of these questions, because I know, I know we've got questions from our patrons. Some questions, haven't we? Yeah. This is from the uh, Grand Theft Balloon uh, post over on Patreon. All right, let's so go I'm have a look I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of balloony stuff in here and stuff in the sky. Let's do it. Uh, what have you got? Um, Adam K., as Alice as a sky pirate does sound interesting, more so if she tries and fails at a pirate accent and lingo at least once. I saw that comment. Do we? Does everybody really want to hear Alice talking in in a pirate voice? I guess it could be uh, kind of cute. Like he says, maybe at least once. Hmm. Did you see? Uh. I just did again. Would a Victorian girl? in 1865 London kind of get the pirate joke? The pirate speaking joke? Like, would that? Yar. Yar. <laughs> uh, may maybe. I don't know, maybe. Could be kind of cute. Yeah, maybe see, as uh, an aside. See, what's he called? CGP Grey. Mm -hmm. Did two pirate videos recently about what it's like to be a pirate from like the captain's point of view and the quartermaster's point of view. Right. It's pretty fun. I think you'd like it. Yeah, I, I'll watch that, <clears throat> but I'm, I'm not sure I'm a big fan of it. Um, eh, we'll see. Now, I, do you know about the reason for the, the eye patch that the pirates wear? Is it because they lost an eye? No. So the pirates used to wear an eye patch because they would put that on before they raided and boarded another ship. And then when they got down below decks where it was super dark, they'd take that patch off. Mm. And then they would have instant 
inside night vision whereas if they had just come running out of the sunlight <laughs> into the underground they'd get stabbed to death so at least that way they had a little bit of an advantage against those the people who who hadn't worn the eye patch that's, that's pretty that's wily they, yeah well you didn't know that the, the eye patch was actually pirate night vision well, i do now now you know pirate night vision <laughs> mm -hmm. um michael spivy I like the visual of Humpty and the moon crashing into each other violently. I picture it as a face-to-face -face collision, being the Humpty Dumpty inspired balloon. Would it crack like an egg? Yeah, so I'm trying to push us away from it being a Humpty Dumpty balloon. So anyone who's not caught up on this, um, Alice is going to escape from the circus realm, the area of denial. She's going to do that via a balloon. She's able to do that because at that point where we come into the game, she actually has the Vorpal Blade in hand for the first time ever, which allows her to sever the ropes that you know tie the balloon to the ground. The balloon takes off. The moon is going to come to intercept and try to return Alice to her prison. Alice is going to be like, not today, moon. Um, and so there will be some sort of crashing and collision and aborting Thing going on there um, Alex and I were actually talking about that yesterday so we're still trying to kind of work out exactly how that's gonna play out but um, I don't I, I had written a response to that I wasn't a big fan of the idea of it being Humpty Dumpty himself for one I don't want us to be murdering like sky murdering <laughs> Humpty Dumpty in the face with a moon um, and I also think we want to reserve Humpty Dumpty is a character for use later on in the game. What, what do yeah, you think? Somebody mentioned that Humpty existed somewhere else already. I'm trying to look if I copied that down or if I just saw it. Hmm. But yeah, maybe it's a bit much having Humpty as the balloon. Um, yeah, so what we have on screen right now, which are the, these are images that are over on Patreon, uh, I like these a lot. These are sort of more traditional Victorian era balloons. Of course, these have got these big, uh, yeah. you know, sort of flappy wings on them. I, that's fine. I don't mind the wings so much. I feel like we did something like that in the original Alice. I know that there was a sort of steampunky balloon thing, and I remember there was a little elf gnomey guy who was uh, pedaling it through the sky. Right. So, yeah. I like Victorian balloons. They're really weird. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, look cool, though. All right. What do you got next? What do we got next? Um, Madeline Tantleaf absolutely loves the idea of Alice as a sky pirate. Uh, Gregory Parabek, the word sky pirates will all, always be linked in my mind to Tailspin and Skies of Arcadia. I used to love Tailspin. I used to love that too. I saw when Greg made that, that um, comment and I was like, oh yeah, Tailspin was really good. Uh, it was formative entertainment of my youth, made me want to grow up to be a pirate until I learned that was not a viable career path in the 21st century. Well, actually well, it is. is. Go I mean, to Somalia, <laughs> Greg. You can make a lot of money being a pirate. <laughs> Uh, I don't know that it's not viable. I feel like it, it could it, be. Are they still big down in that part of the world? Well, the U.S. is down there blowing them up right, right. now. And nobody's talking about that. That okay. this, There's like this crazy unauthorized massive bombing campaign of Somalia going right now, going on right now as we speak. So All right. you know, maybe not a great time to be a Somali pirate, but, you know. Somewhere else is probably fine. Anywhere else is probably <laughs> fine. Um... What else we got? Andriel. Uh, Sky Pirate Alice sounds amazing. I also agree that bringing Humpty Dumpty as the moon is a great idea. Hmm. Mm. I don't know about that. I wonder if people have fully thought that through uh, sure. about having him as the moon. But anyway, <laughs> you know, we, we don't always get complete consensus on these ideas. So Our, uh, our favorite guy, Salah, simply says, Moon Balloon. There you go. That was his comment. Moon balloon. <laughs> spelled, yeah, he likes it because it... Spelled incorrectly. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. Uh, I've got a couple of messages here about your migraines that you've been having. All right. Mm. Uh, Anna Leper, very scary when your head hurts. I put on an old pair of glasses and had a bad headache earlier this week. Hope you can find a solution. Haven't we all done that? We've all put on somebody else's glasses 
or like an old pair that look like the bottom of jam jars and then we've just ended up with a headache yeah well um, <laughs> as i said i'm glad i mean i'm, I'm not glad I, i'm appreciative of all the support um this was me and yen going to the hospital um, which is odd there's like a newly freshly built hospital 10 minutes away from our house which focuses on neurology and um, head and brain issues and so i went there i got an mri uh this was the doctor's office we went to and yeah it sucked i mean i've had i've been knocked out multiple times in recent weeks by this um and i don't really know what to do so if anybody out there has got advice i'm, I'm open to it i'd love to hear it I, I do suspect it may have something to do with my eyes, but um, I don't know. We'll see. Well, Wendy J just hopes it's your computer causing pain. Well, you did. You had your MRI, didn't you? And there's no, there's no brain slug or massive space tumor going on in there. So I am a mam -am says, I'm telling you it is most likely acid reflux, a.k.a. GERD or a.k.a. GORD. I had the same problem... Uh, for ages, then it turned out to be reflux and sleep apnea. You said you've off the hot sauce recently. Why? Um, I mean, I'm curious to hear why GERD, GERD, GORD, whatever would cause migraine headaches that are all focused up here in my eye and in my head. Um, but yeah, I stopped on the hot sauce because of that, because of GERD, GORD. Um, I did go to a doctor. They did diagnose me with that. And so what I did was we now eat dinner very early in the day, like 6 p.m. Um, and I'm not going to sleep until 9 p.m. So there's three hours between when I eat and when I lay down to go to bed um, and some other things that I've done to adjust um, to fix that. So I, I don't think that's the problem, but who knows? Anyway, let's not turn <laughs> the live stream into into. No. Um, uh, diagnosing Americans uh, <laughs> headaches if you've got ideas maybe post them up over on patreon or tweet them at me or something like that well okay Richard Horn says glad you're doing better hope you're back to 100% soon but trying not to be a negative Nancy but is not sold completely on the Humpty balloon it's a bit much for me yeah it's you're, a bit much right. for me too I'm not nobody's Richard. sold on that yeah, yeah. um Sarah Caxor, entirely the opposite, likes the idea and could see it cracking like an egg when it gets hit. Hmm. Uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> We've got a couple here, but are they just going over the same stuff? Uh, Firkin Surf likes the idea, uh, but also wants to know if more nursery rhymes in the game would be an option, because I always thought they were creepy. It's kind of, uh, it's a bit overdone, isn't it? Hey, now, you, you better be careful. You better not speak too soon, Martin. No. Uh, because, I mean, yes. in recent times, it seems to be the go-to, let's make something creepy. Just like those artists, the go-to, let's make something surreal. It's just add eyes. Yeah, well, okay, so here's why I'm saying be careful what you say we're not going to do too soon because I was talking to Alex and one of the things we were saying about how so, so this is a good question for the crowd design the group um, how are we going to overcome the the moon's lullaby that he uses to sing us back to our prison um, now I made the joke that Alice could poke her ears out uh, <laughs> with this this newly acquired vorpal blade now it was a joke and then alex said to me oh we don't want to encourage people stabbing themselves you know self-harm i was like no no, no. i was just kind of kidding um but uh it it you know it is a fair question um we know that the moon has the power to sing her to sleep so how does she stop that from happening and um one of the things that i said other than stabbing her ears out was that perhaps she sings a lullaby or she whistles a tune, and that by doing that, she actually manages to sort of thwart or, or play over the sound of the moon's lullaby, thereby nullifying it. So She put the moon to sleep. I don't think she's going to put the moon <laughs> to sleep, but I think that at least she's going to disrupt his tune enough that she doesn't hear it, and then she isn't put to sleep by it, right? All right. So, I mean, what what do you think? Singing, 
So, the anti-lullaby back, yeah. Well, so. it, it did lead to my saying that, you know, perhaps there is a throughout the game, and we've said this before, uh, that she's got some little whistles and she's got some uh, animations that she plays to kind of hum to herself. And uh, I think this is the scene with the train. The train escapes. Oh, yeah, there it goes. The infernal train. Choo -choo. Very angry. Look at all those flames. You know it's evil because it's got flames coming out of it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and it's even it's sort of training off into like a satanic sigil in the sky there. Man, dark. We found the source of the shaking, but are those two quaking? What are they up to? You'll never stop us. <laughs> this, you remember this, right? It's left. Um, the, bo the boss that's not a boss? Oh, is it the fake out? Yeah, it's the fake out that makes everybody angry. Did they actually create that infernal train to destroy Wonderland? What does that matter? They deserve to die. So, uh, yeah, I explained the last time we played through this that we did actually have functional working boss type mechanics up and running for this and uh, I remember playing it I remember fighting against this boss but we could a never photo, get it get the the sort of working is... properly it was annoying <laughs> it was broken <laughs> it's a really good build up though you know, everyone's for... like "Ooh, I can't wait to fight this and then you know you get this like red ring you're like oh shit am I gonna have to fight fight it by shooting at that <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, stupid mouse and hair. <laughs> That's what you get. I like how it automatically ejects them out of there, so they can, can get a beat down from Hatter. <laughs> oh dear. I do love a good boss in the game. My precious. Oh, so sad. She's pissed. She is pissed. Look at that furrowed brow. Looking at it. There's no time for whatever it is you want to talk about. It's time for tea. Talk trees with turtle. He ran the looking These uh, animations turned out pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Edward, God, he put so much work into these. Oh, pretty great. Yep. It's not just like 2D stuff that's flapping around. I mean, there is depth to them as well. Well, yeah, I mean, it's actual individual elements that he put into Adobe Elements, I guess. I can't remember which program he used, but they are in there on 3D planes, and he's flipping them and turning them, and it's pretty good. It's actually a good question there from Wendy J. Did these actually exist as pieces of paper, or were they just all digital? They did not exist as pieces of paper. They were drawn in Photoshop by our art team in 2D. So Edward was able to give them an asset list and say, I would like these pieces. Um, and then those pieces were made. And uh, he was then able to incorporate them into, I think it was Adobe Elements or something like that. Where he used them. Don't trust these guys. I, yeah, well, they're not good guys, are they? Sailors down by the wharf. <laughs> what comes natural, Look natural to me. <laughs> now, I really like our Londoners. I mean, I feel like looking back at them now, they're I think I mentioned this when we first started playing, they're they're way too over stylized. Uh, I, I don't like that, that they're just made out to be so wacky in their proportions, you know, like their their physicality. Well, that's what Londoners look like. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I I feel like that aspect of the game has not held up very well. I think I said that last time. This this sort of uh, exaggerated caricature features. I don't know. But I mean, and and I don't feel like she fits into that world because she looks quite normal, right? Amidst amidst all these caricature people. This was something else that I brought up the other day with, with uh, Alex, was that we had a lot of fighting over what Alice was going to look like in this game. And that's a, that's a phase that we're going through right now. Not the fighting, but we're trying to, <laughs> to nail down once and for all what 13-year-old Alice in this game looks like. And um, it, it was a battle. When we made this game, it was a big battle to figure out what she was going to look like. Yeah, I remember you said, I forget who it was, but... They did a, a sketch, and the one that you went with, 
you kind of like you just knew it as soon as you saw it. Well, no, that was on the first go around. That was on uh, AMA American Ooh, Wiki's Alice. So right. on Alice Madness Returns, we had to come back to defining her look for a new generation of hardware. Right. And there was a fair amount of bullshit that went into <laughs> that process. So um, I mentioned to Alex, one of the things that would really upset me sometimes was uh, we would get a, a variation on an Alice that I would like, and I would say, hey, I really like this, or, you know, na name a number of things. It could be a variation on, on Alice or on a weapon or something. I really like the Mangled Mermaid, by the way. Sexy. She, well, I mean, I don't like her. I just like the concept. <laughs> I, I've always loved this. When you go to visit the UK and you've got the fox and the hound or the dragon and the whale or whatever, and it's like actual really pubs all around the UK are really like that. Yeah. And sometimes they're really cheeky with those names, so... Um, yeah, that's quite cute. Used to go to the Frog and Parrot. There you go. Back where I was from. <laughs> so, um, I said to Alex, you know, one of the things that happened on Minus Returns was I would, I would find a piece of art that I liked, I would think that we were going to settle on that, and then I would find that people had gone behind my back and done up new concept art, and then gone around and raised a bunch of support from a bunch of people who weren't really sure that they were even in this sort of like life and death battle for what the main character of the game looked like. And then those people would come back to me and go, look, we made this new piece of art and we have a bunch of support from all these people in the studio. So this is the way it should look now. And it wasn't <laughs> very annoying. Office very politics. Yeah. You just put a beat down on them. You'll never get past long Tim. I'll get what you and your floozies owe me, Miss Lee. Anyway, you have one last comment here. This is actually the one I was looking for. Um, from Chris Maria. Um, I recall Humpty being in the hub area for Caterpillar's plot in American McGee's Alice, sitting next to one of the archways cracked open. I also think he's in the sequel book, Through the Looking Glass. It makes sense for him to show up here again. Probably not as a balloon, though. Do you remember that? Having Humpty? Yeah, I mean, I think we didn't really use him properly in the last game. Um, I I know that, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a character in the books, and we ought, I think it would be nice to use him, um, but we never properly utilized him in Madness Returns, and I think it would be nice in Asylum that he actually gets a stage and he gets some lines, so... Hey. Sometimes you just run out of space. You run out of time, you know? You won't get yeah. I'll Happens. Down to the okay. Where are we at? Look at the time. We're going to start wrapping stuff up. We are. We're about to wrap stuff up. We're going to let this last cinematic play out here. Oh, oh, no. Hitting a woman. That's not right. Strong one as well. She's out. She's out. Well, but we need an excuse. <laughs> We needed her to be knocked out. It was a, a narrative excuse for a transition scene. Okay. All right. Well, that brings us to a very good stopping point for today's uh, live stream. Look at her go. Meteoric entry into the realm of ice. She should have landed and done like the done the, the burning the, the the hero land on one knee. And then and then like <laughs> melted into the ice and got stuck. That would have been funny. Maybe. Yeah. All right, Alice. Enough of you. Tundraful. Oh, that's that's punny. That's just very funny. <laughs> har har har. All done for today. So, um, what are we gonna do? We've got to do the things. I've got to give away a final Omega necklace. Do, do we not? I don't want to lose my progress. Is it okay to just main menu it at this point? Probably. Probably. I mean, you just entered a new area. It yeah, must have saved. All right. So, done with that. Uh, we're going to give away another necklace. Woo! What is the question, Font Lord? What is your favorite is color? Is your name? No. What? <laughs> Come up with an amusing British pub name. Oh, I like that one. Oh my god! <laughs> that was phenomenal. <laughs> that, was, that was the best one ever. So yes, if you would like to win an Omega necklace, Martin has just had the best ever... <laughs> question I've ever heard come yep. up with an amusing British pub name. Fantastic. Yeah.
So let's see what we get. The Snorting Dragon, the Spotted Dick. It reminds me of one scale. of these sort of like... <laughs> like a, even Wendy agrees. Wow, good question, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> the Wiggly Willy. The Wiggly Willy. The Sober Irishman. That's a funny one. The Big Twanger. <clears throat> I feel like some of these we won't be able to read out loud. We'll get in trouble. Maybe. Yeah, the oh. wanky <laughs> whale. So now there's a second spotted dick. Is that really necessary? Our fans are all so rude. They are. How dare you Why guys? Why can't you be like us? are so pleasant yes. to everyone we talk to. Oh, boy. The Putrid Pirate. I feel like that's from yeah. something. Is that, a, <laughs> is that a reference to... Putrid Pirate. I don't know. <laughs> the Flappy Stingray. <laughs> the Font and Flagon. Oh, no. <laughs> Priscilla says, American happy with a, a Martin question? The world is ending. Well, Priscilla, look outside. The, the <laughs> world is literally ending. So, yes, this may be the last live stream we ever do. <laughs> uh, the Farting Crow. That's a good one. Hmm. The Chaotic Unicorn. Good ones here, but you're all still far too rude. Yes. Uh, well, before we roll it, let me just do the the, the things here. So um, the things, if you go to AmericanMiggy.com, you want to support our efforts on Alice Asylum. Everything that we do, all the art that gets made, all the terrible jokes that we tell, all the not all the prizes we give away, but anyway, um, a lot of the, the stuff that you see us doing here, especially for Alice 3, is powered by our lovely patrons and your support. So there's a couple things you can do to support that actually don't cost any money. One of those things would be subscribe to the Alice 3 mailing list. Um, don't use like dead relatives or dead grandmas to fill this, this stuff in. We need real names and email addresses only. Um, you can follow me on social media. Look at that, I even added the Twitch icon. Amazing. Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. I'm not using a lot of these things so much anymore because they're, they're just depressing. It's just, you go on Twitter and it's just depressing. So I don't know. But anyway, you can follow me there. Sometimes I say things that get me in trouble. Um, mm -hmm. And then we are over on Patreon. So you don't have to be a patron to access the content that we put there. Um, but if you do want to support what we're doing, you can do that for as little as a dollar a month. We do have unique backer rewards. Um, things like the chaos necklace and art prints and we are going to start work now on the uh, snow globe so it's going to be our next big patreon patron project and next week on monday or tuesday um, yen my wife and i are going to go down to iwu which is like this big um kind of showroom city <laughs> for like all of the factories in china um, so we're going to go down there and then last but not least, you can buy things from our online um, online shop, which is called Mysterious. And yeah, we've got all kinds of things, including like little skulls that you can hold in the palm of your hand. And think about death. And think about death. That's what they're for, isn't it? That is what they're supposed for. supposed to ponder death and then live a good life or that's, something that's, to that's that effect. That's exactly right. So there you go. Um, mm -hmm. Did you get any more funny names here? Just ones I can't say. The Drunken Bum. The rump and dump. I did, I did see the slarty bart fast, which I quite liked. That's a good one. Hooker's conch. <laughs> Cards and hearts. The slarty bart fast. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> All right. So uh, some real creativity going on there. <clears throat> the Muppets Tavern. I'd like to go there. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. Uh, thank Let's, you for all uh, the creativity. Let's roll it. And Seraphic. 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 Sarah-ic. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We have no idea. Anyway, Seraphic, you did win. Congratulations. I hope you can hear that and see that. Uh, you did win the updated amazing new Omega necklace. Again, send a message to support at mysterious.design. Include your name, your phone number, and the fact that you won an Omega necklace. Do all that within 24 hours. Do it all in a format that we can read. There you go. Congra yeah. Congratulations, Seraphic. Seraphic. Congratulations to all of our winners today. You're all winners. Even if you they didn't are. win a necklace, you're still winners to just, us. Just for being here. Just, yeah, in the winner's <laughs> circle. <laughs> all right, everybody. Uh, apologies again for the firewall nonsense, but uh, lovely having you all join us here today. We, we, we will be back again soon. Oh, you know what we need to do? We need to do a YouTube comment thing for the, the lucky five oh, yeah. this, this month. Do it. 
Yes, we do a Lucky 5 giveaway on Patreon uh, every month. We just pick five people at random to just give some stuff to. And we have to open it up to other social channels to be all sort of legal and above board. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please comment below. I don't know what we're going to give away. Give away one of these new necklaces, but they've got to comment one of these funny um, names that are, are... All right. <laughs> on YouTube, come up with your own... What? No. You it has to be these. one of these. Yeah, because then All we right. know it's like that's what it actually is. I like the liver's regret. Comment one of these pub names in the YouTube comments below and you will be entered into the draw. No, no. You have to give them a specific one. Oh. How well, otherwise they could just say some random nonsense and well, you're going to think all right. it's... Something not too rude then. The moose and, moose, moose and boot. No. The, uh, okay. Comment... The Muppets Tavern. The Muppets Tavern. The Muppets Tavern. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Write that in the comments on YouTube in order to be entered into the drawing we do every month over on Patreon. That way we're not in violation of some sort of giveaway rules or something. Who knows? And so, what's the date? So now it's the 4th. So do it before the 10th. Yeah, if you do you it know. after that, you've, it's too late. I don't know. <laughs> we're just trying to give stuff away. All right, everybody. <laughs> Uh, from Shanghai in the underground lair. Much love to everyone out there. Please stay safe and sane. Jib it up. Jib it up. And we will see Get you. Bent. We will see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.